Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create the anime speed lines in Adobe Photoshop. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. We're going to be doing this tutorial in such a way that this is going to be completely modular. So you can do this in your own way. You can completely customize it to exactly how you like. So the first thing you need to do is have a Photoshop project opened. So the first thing we're going to be doing is turning on our rulers so we can set up a middle center point axis that we're going to be working off of. Your ruler should show up on your panel like this with little lines along the side left and right to activate this you can click ctrl and r to enable and disable the ruler so we're just going to have to make these enabled and what we're going to be doing is just dragging them into the center of our layer so you'll notice once you hit the center it'll kind of snap and guide there so once you hit the center on your vertical axis you can let go and then we're going to be dragging a ruler from the top also and it'll kind of snap in the center again and we're going to be using this middle point a little bit later in our tutorial once you have your two rulers made, what we're going to be doing is making a new layer. You can do this by coming down to the layers panel and we're going to be clicking the new layer option right here. From this point, we're going to be grabbing our pen tool and we're going to be drawing the shape layer that we want to activate here. So to do this, we can select the pen tool over here on the left hand side or by clicking the keyboard shortcut P. And what we're going to be doing is drawing our first triangle on this screen that we're going to be using as our speed line. So what I'm going to be doing is drawing my triangle here. You can click and create a point anywhere in the center of your layer. We then have to draw the triangle shape, so we'll draw two more dots around here like this. And then we're going to come back to our origin point, and you'll see a small circle next to your pen tool. And this means we're going to complete this layer. Once you have your triangle drawn, what we're going to be doing is transforming this into a shape layer by coming up to the top left of our Photoshop. And you can see we have the option for selection, mask, and shape. By clicking the shape tool, what we're going to do is turn this into a shape, which means it'll be picked up as a vector item. So we can scale and adjust this as much as we want, and it won't lose quality, which is going to come into play a little bit later on. If you want to adjust your shape, you won't have to redraw a new one. We can simply select our direct selection tool, which should be under your typing tool. In this extra selection box right here, there's a direct selection tab. What we can do is click our shape, click on a point, and then click and drag to move the point around. So what you can do is adjust this even after the fact quite easily to make it exactly how you want it to be. So in this case, this is what I'm looking for, or this is the kind of effect I want to create for my speed lines. So once you have this done, what we're going to be doing is clicking Control and T to bring up the transform tool. And here we can see the outline of our object. And in the middle, we can see an anchor point. So I'm going to be zooming in a little bit to my anchor point. And you can see this is actually like a crosshair type item. And what this does is determine where our object center point will be. So basically right now, if we scale this item, it's going to scale from the center point or it's going to use the center point as its example. And it's going to grow and move from here. Rotating the object will also rotate it from this pivotal point. So what we're going to be doing is taking this anchor point and bringing it to the center of our entire layer. So that's why we draw our rulers earlier on. So what we're going to be doing is zooming in and we're going to be grabbing our anchor point and setting it right in the center of our layer. So it's perfectly in the center. And we're going to be using this to adjust our speed line and copy and rotate all the way around. So once you have your anchor point in the center, what we're going to be doing is coming up to the items on the top. And we're going to be grabbing the rotation item here and we're going to be setting it to 30 degrees. So you can see now our triangle rotated around this point in a 30 degree fashion. So what we're going to be doing is duplicating this around in a 30 degree intervals so we can get the object to go all the way around. So this requires a little bit of experimentation to see what works for you. In this case, I actually like the 30 degree angle. It kind of gives a nice little texture to the image. Although this is a little bit of customization and you can experiment around to see what works best for you. So once you have your radius set in, you will need to leave something that isn't zero in this case to be able to create this effect. What we're going to have to do is click enter twice to fully enable this. Then what we're going to be doing is duplicating this triangle all the way around in 30 degree intervals to make it fill our entire space. So how we do this is by clicking control alt shift and then we're going to be pressing T which is going to duplicate our layer. And as you can see after doing that we have our point selected all the way around and it's just duplicated to fill our entire space. Now you may notice that this is all around the center point, which is fine if your image is in a square format, but in this case, I've actually created my layer in a 16 by nine window. So how we're going to adjust this is by actually stretching our speed lines to stretch out over our entire screen. So what we need to do is come down to our layers panel and I'm gonna be selecting all of the triangles we just created. And I'm gonna be clicking Control and G to group these items so we have them in one space. From this point, we're gonna be clicking Control and T again, which is gonna select all of the items automatically. And what we're going to be doing is stretching these out to actually fill inside our layer so we can fill our speed lines like this. 
Now, what I would recommend doing is adjusting and experimenting with these to find a good point and scale ratio to where you'll be happy. So in this case, I'm still not too happy. You can see we still have some space inside the shape where we can see that it's still inside. So what I'm going to be doing is zooming out by clicking Alt and then scrolling out on the scroll wheel. And what I'm going to be doing is extending and making our shape layers bigger. And this is another reason why we need to have it in a shape layer specifically. So we don't use quality when we stretch and scale like this. So to make them bigger, what we need to do is hold the Alt key and we're going to be coming down to the corner which is gonna make our point extend from the center. So we do this and we click and drag to create our speed lines like this. And you can see when we do this, we start to get a nice speed line effect. Now in this case, what I would recommend doing after this point is duplicating and reproducing this process again with lines in a different style and extending them to fill up the empty spaces. So one of the nice thing about speed lines that you see in animes is they're kind of different shapes, different sizes. So I'd recommend experimenting to see maybe this shape layer should move slightly to the left or slightly to the right or different intervals in terms of uh, percentages and different shapes and different sizes. So I'm going to put an example on screen of some items I've created previously. And you can see that with the different shape sizes and layers, you can create some really cool effects in Photoshop like this. And using the duplication technique, you can really do some nice effects. Really, it's up to your own imagination how you do this, different colors colors you can do a lot of cool effects with this technique anyway guys if you enjoyed this tutorial be sure to drop a like subscribe if you're new check out the other videos on the channel i'm going to be leaving a link down below to my paypal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me anyway guys thank you so much for watching until next time as always keep it saucy peace